So this is the second video about playing keyboards for that Joe Payne. In the first video I talked about my thought processes that went into putting together the rig and in this one you'll see the actual equipment that I used. So as I said I was replicating an organ so I've got my two manuals uh, top and bottom and I've got um, and I've got my faders on both for doing being the stops. I've got a piano action on the bottom which I need because although Joe is playing a lot of the piano in the set there's a few songs where I'm the stunt pianist so to speak and he's he's off being the front man. For the top board to complement the piano action uh, I needed something that would be as expressive as the Kurzweil here and have all the right MIDI inputs and pedal inputs so my Roland A50, venerable Roland A50 which normally lives in a tray under my desk uh, got pulled into service for the gig. It's also got a really nice synth action which is nice to sort of complement the piano action. Each keyboard also has a sustain pedal and an expression pedal, one for each, and I also had a couple of generic switch pedals which do things like changing patches, there's a couple of songs with Hammond organs so they do Leslie speed as well, and uh, I also have a Bluetooth sw foot switch uh, because I've got all the sheet music here on my surface and it turns the pages for me. I had to learn to do something quite unusual with my pedal setup. Um, normally a pianist would play, the, uh, would use their right foot on the sustain pedal and leave their left foot to do whatever, everything else, but I, I couldn't get the hang of doing an expression pedal left-footed, so, as it were. So I've actually got them the other way around. Um, so I have to the expression pedal with my right foot and then the sustain pedal with my left foot. And then I can still turn pages, change patches and everything while still controlling the dynamics of what I'm playing. Uh, it does, however, lead to the occasional sticky situation where if I'm like that, holding a chord and shaping it, and I have to turn the page, I have to sort of do a hop to the sustain pedal to hold the chord, change the patch, and then hop back again. And let me tell you, that does take a little bit of practice. I should also point out that both of these pedals are side by side, so if I need to, I can do them both at once. And while we're on the subject of pedals, uh, this down here is an Airturn Ped Pro Bluetooth pedal. And that's hooked up to Mobile Sheets, which is running on my Surface, so I can just page through every song in the set. And they're all queued up in set list order. And all the sheet music, uh, I notated myself at the time to do that, um, and then just put all the PDFs in here. Which also means, because there's often sort of long gaps between gigs, maybe six months or so, it means that uh, when we start rehearsing again, I can hit the ground running and I'm not fumbling around trying to think, oh, where did I where did I put the flute or where did I put the string parts or something like that when we're picking up songs again. It's also useful because I've got this Surface Pen, which you can use to scribble all over the sheets and it will remember it for you. So things like important patch changes, if I've got to do something with a pedal or something like that, I can make my own notes on them. One of the other interesting bits of hardware I've got is this, which is a breath controller. This one is a by TE Control, and it's a USB breath controller just hooked up uh, just to a uh, USB hub plugged into the surface. And all it is really is a tube that you blow into, and that gets translated into MIDI. Um, it's plugged into the surface, the surface is running good old MIDI OX to translate the USB MIDI into my Sonic Transducer, the Focusrite 2i4, and that just sends it out on a 5-pin DIN cable so it can speak to the rest of the hardware. The, the Kurzweil does actually have a dedicated socket on the back to plug in a breath controller, one of the old Yamaha ones, but of course Yamaha stopped making those shortly after this was released, although I have heard that TE Control, who make this USB one, are now making, or are, are, going, are going to make uh, one that's a new one that's compatible with the Yamaha, the old Yamaha standard, so I may well get one of those and get rid of a bit more hardware. Now there are no patches in the, in the factory set that are designed to use breath controllers, but fortunately I made my own. I, I just took some of the stock woodwind and brass patches and then changed them so that the breath controller um, does things like, well it controls the overall volume, uh, opens up the filter a bit when you blow really hard just to get that kind of, um, the feel of overblowing. Uh, for, um, just for that, just for that extra bit of authenticity. Just such a small thing really makes, really makes particularly the solo patches come to life. When you couple it with the with aftertouch uh, to control things like the vibrato, they really come alive. <laughs> 
And I love that flute patch. It sounds so good. I built some ensemble patches as well, but the breath controller was a little less successful on there, because particularly for long passages, uh, a real section will do things like stagger the breathing, so it sounds smooth throughout the passage, but of course, if it's just me breathing, it's quite a struggle, even as a woodwind and brass player myself, it is a struggle to get to the end of some of those passages, but it's, it's worth it for the sound in the end. And on the subject of wind and brass, I do play at a few points in the set. My actual trumpet. Samples just aren't as good aren't as good as a bit of metal. So, so let's have a look at some of the setups and patches that I made. The main one I use is this string patch. Which I use for most of the songs, uh, for, which I use on most of the songs in the set. And it sounds great even when you're doing sort of really subtle stuff. Or you can put it into Divisi mode and get some really huge kind of sounds. And uh, that's, a, that's a really good kind of bread and butter sound. There's a few places where sort of mix it in with a bit of sub bass just to give it even more oomph kind of. Other patches I quite like is the church organ that I touched on briefly in the first video. Again, you can do some really subtle chapel-y kind of sound with it. And you can gradually bring in the full all stops drawn sound, so going from something like this. I wish I had some proper organ pedals to help those bass parts, but my feet have got enough to be do dealing with in this gig. And finally in Moonlit Love, where I really get to use all the expression, going from a big kind of grand intro, an organ and everything, it's all going on. And then you can bring in the pizzicato in the lower register. And just for variety, I've got some nice spiccatos up here. So that about covers it. If you've liked what you've heard, do come and see Joe uh, play live. I'll put all the details in the description below. And uh, if you've got any questions about the rig or the, the music or anything, uh, pop them in the comments and I will endeavour to answer them. And of course, remember to like, share and subscribe, all the usual sort of thing. See you on the next one. Wait for the plane to go over. time.